Well, hello, I'm Simon Cooper, and this is the latest in our series of interviews with experts around online meetings and conferences. Uh, my job is Global Communications Lead for the Green Commodities Programme, uh, and our guest today is Dirk Anthony, who's a partner in Blank White Page, an executive coach and strategy advisor to companies, but also a tutor at the Henley Business School in the UK. So Dirk, with all of your experience, both in businesses and uh, talking to students, What's the first piece of advice you'd give to somebody who's moving a meeting to an online situation from a real life situation? Hello, Simon. Thank you for, uh, for inviting me here. The first one is, and you may say, well, that's pretty obvious, Dirk, but the first one is preparation, preparation, preparation. And I think there is no difference between offline and online in the sense that most of the conversations that I'm engaged with, the person talks about what they want on the agenda. I suppose the question I ask them after they've explained all the different items on the agenda, what we want to talk about is if you had that conversation and it was a success, what will you have achieved? So what's the purpose of the meeting? And most of the percentage chance of success of a meeting will come out of that initial conversation. Um, and there's a, a tip that I would offer is that um, there's two parts to that is what are the cognitive things the things we want people to think about but also what are the things how do we want people to feel and typically in a in an organizational meeting or a business meeting it'll be what do we actually want the participants to do from that uh, academic work around uh, group dynamics what, what's the main conclusion out of that that amateurs if you like <laughs> non-academics running meetings should take there's a, a writer called Schutz, spelled S-C-H-U-T-Z, um, and he studied lots and lots of groups of people, and he came up with sort of three areas, and, and from that work has come another psychometric test, uh, and one that I found really, really useful in group work. Uh, it's called FIRO B, um, and uh, he talks about um, inclusion, control, and affection. And, um, and they're the, so the, the, some of the emotions that start to come out. Am I feeling included in this group? When you think about the dynamics of people, uh, concerns and hopes around feeling included, you know, and the fear of being insignificant. Now, you might say, well, there's a lot of alpha males and females in the room. That's, but, you know, <laughs> we have those, those emotions, all of us. The sense of control. Um, am I being judged as competent or incompetent. So that sense of control over things, which leads on to competence and confidence and the sense of affection. So he used inclusion, control and affection and affection of feeling unworthy within the group. And, and, and those sorts of emotions around that um, are, are things for us to think about. Do people feel as though they're valued in the group? Um, are they, do they feel as though their, their thoughts are being taken seriously? The flip, and thanks very much for that and moving on to the next person, mm. may, be, may have a, an impact on somebody in a different way. Somebody who speaks first often in a face-to-face -face meeting, what, what impact does that have on how other people in the group are feeling and what they are looking for out of that uh, for themselves? So that's the real sort of deeper emotional stuff that a lot of people don't even realise is actually going on for them. And of those three, is, is affection the one that's the one you need to take more care of online because you can't have the, the physical warmth of being in the same room as somebody else? I think it's actually the affection is and it's, a, it's a difficult word, but it's the need to be a part of that group um, in, in, with inclusion. With affection, it's, it's uh, you know, am I, am I sort of thought of highly um, enough? And so not to take the word literally, but do I need to demonstrate to others that I feel them as being worthy? And do I need to be felt myself that's worthy? So there's, there's two parts to those. Uh, do, am I the sort of person that wants to include people? And do I want to be included? Where's the level of need? Um, how much control am I prepared to cede to the facilitator and other people in the group? And how much control do I feel I need to have myself? Because that has an impact on my level of confidence. But I think it's in, the, in simple terms, it's, it's actually recognizing that there are people's feelings of being involved. There are some people who are w very warm and friendly and engaging, but their need to be, a, to, to be a part of the group or their need to be felt of worthy is, is actually quite low. Um, and, and they're the sorts of things you try to understand in a group about um, uh, how, does, how do those things match other people's needs and wants. Should we always assume the people who we bring to a meeting in real life are the same people that should be coming to an online meeting? Is that automatic, that the groupings are the same? I, th I think um, 
what you're picking up is I think is something very important. Um, we have so many, many meetings who should actually be there. Uh, and, and the convener of the meeting has to ask themselves, what's the reason I need this person there? Which comes back to what's the purpose of the meeting? Um, what's going on for me that I need a cast of thousands or, or I only want a small group? What's the impact on, on the wider system that I'm sort of operating in? Um, I think it's the same in both. Um, I think the fact that Zoom is easier to get people together in some ways may create a temptation to have lots of people there. Um, I think that um, really everyone that walks in the room needs to understand why they're there. And again, comes back to what are the agenda items and, and what's the outcome of the meeting that we're looking for, which helps dictate who should be there. You said that preparation is important and I think um... Uh, Joe Jaworski, the guy who co-wrote this book I've got here, said the most important hour of any meeting is the hour before. Uh, but what about the time afterwards? So quite often you, you get into a meeting, it happens, it finishes, and then you're straight off into the next thing on your timetable. For me, online meetings, online conferences don't embed in the same way as a physical one does. Well, I think that's the part we come down to what do you want people to think? How do you want them to feel and what would you like them to do as a result of that meeting? Um, I, I must admit, and this is just a thing for me, having minutes of meetings are, are important from a governance point of view. But I think the most important part is everyone understanding what is the action that they need to take or what have we decided as a group? So what are the decisions that we've taken? Uh, what are the actions that need to be done by when? So I think that... Um, Ultimately, there's some time at the end of a meeting where we actually say, where we actually summarise where we're up to. And I think an important part, as, as important as it is to how people arrive at the meeting, um, is actually how they're leaving. Uh, and, you know, you've made the point before that um, being able to give people a chance of sort of saying, where are you at now? And, you know, how are you feeling when you're leaving? Or what's the one word that would describe how you're feeling? Any of those sorts of things to help people think about in their own mind this is what I think about this meeting this is what I think about I can do so I can then go off to another one if I've got a back-to-back -back. and obviously somebody has to be able to share the notes yeah when we're all allowed out again do you think this way of meeting will carry on I think it will um, more so I th what I'm noticing with clients who um, have i suppose because they've grown up in a world where you know being able to see people in the room and managing by the clock is is natural um i think this provides a whole new um option to people to say we want to be effective and efficient um what's the purpose of the meeting can this be done via this mechanism so i think it's provided more choice for all of us um to be able to say and we've and we've been forced to learn something new um and what a fabulous experience that we've been able to have. I don't think it will replace Friday night cocktails um, that a lot of businesses and organisations are having or um, or the, uh, the, the quiz, but it does give everyone a different way of more naturally coming to, um, to, to connect, you know, using this, this medium. Dirk, thank you very much for your insights. Um, I'm going to ask you my favourite question now, which is that if you could change one thing about online meetings, if I give you a magic wand to do that, what would you change? Um, I would make sure um, that the convener of the meeting always kept their promise that the meeting would finish when they said it would. <laughs> thank you very much for keeping well within the time that we've allocated for this. Dirk Anthony, thank you. Thank you, Simon.